Um, I don't think I have to explain in detail who Pinkas de la Vega is. I think most of you know, uh, and, uh, Paul and, and Carlos is not know about Pinkas Lazo, so just short, very short uh, uh, bio. So uh, he was born around 1539 and uh, 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 Spanish uh, conquistador father and uh, Inca princess, quote unquote, and uh, uh, mother. And after his father, uh, Sebastian um, de la Vega, uh, Sebastian de la Vega died in 1559, he moved to Spain and then he, Inca Garcilaso remained in Spain uh, forever. And uh, of course, he Traveled many places, but you know he went to Cordoba uh, uh, to get uh, his uncle's um, uh, inheritance. So he you know, stayed in um, Montilla, so very close to Cordoba. Uh, and uh, actually, I went to Montilla with uh, Professor Garcia Aguilar. So, uh, and then the reason why I'm doing this presentation is because uh, the there are uh, always many critics talk about the, the first part of uh, royal uh, commentary. La primera parte de comentarios reales de los incas. The second part has the same title, but uh, it has a difference of title than Historia General de Peru, so, which uh, that was published posthumously in 1617. And then the first part, many, 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 many critics from Peru, US, and uh, Spain, and other parts of the world have studied. But the second part, and there's uh, very few studies, and there's no book about the second part. And But the style uh, of the second part is quite different from the first. First, we, first part, we talked much about uh, the maternal memory of Inca ancestors. The second part, he rewrites, actually, that by then, 16, uh, early 1600, uh, there are already uh, official history of uh, Peru, uh, conquest of Peru uh, already was published and they're widely uh, distributed. So it's a little bit strange, but in a way, his personal you know, point of view, if you want to finish you know, the Inca history and then after the conquest. So um, then, you know, I thought, People expected probably the second part also talked about memory, and his father was a conquistador, and, and, and he was there. So we thought people expected something testimonial, but that uh, Inca Garcilaso does quite uh, different things. So here are the examples uh, of Garcilaso. Uh, this is uh, book one and Libro Uno, Capitulo Siete. So he talks about. First, he talks a little bit about uh, uh, Spain, Spain before the conquest. Here, I'm not going to read all this long quote, but you know, just uh, if you look at uh, you, you know people in the room and uh, uh, and the people in Zoom, you can all read in Spanish. But in this, what called called me attention is uh, la renta de España, the revenue of Spain, and he talks about money. And then this is just a very short example, but some parts he really in detail talks about how much money spent in carries, how much money spent in you know building ships, and then he goes on. Every every uh, chapter almost he mentions about the expenses. So I was uh, thinking, I mean, of course, uh, I wouldn't say Casas was the first one, but some other uh, later, like uh, late 1590s or early uh, 1600. Some historians mentioned about the expenses, but not in in these details. So that got me really interested. I mean, why was he talking about this money? And then, uh, and in the second book, the second part, the Historia General de Peru, he mentioned a few authors. Um, sorry, uh, I mean, uh, you can see Jean Bodan and. Francesco Bicciardini, Giovanni Voltero, he mentioned the these names. Of course, he doesn't quote them. He, he mentioned just Bicciardini a little bit and Jean Bourdain, uh, his uh, Republica. 
import, but he doesn't call, but he mentioned the title. So and he the username Giovanni Potero, but he doesn't call this author. But so I was looking at these, and of course I'm trying to find some influences, but um, and I thought uh, you know the Cialdini's uh, history was very interesting because uh, he wrote uh, the history of Italy before Italy existed in some way. Italy as a nation who uh, was that like imaginary form by which you know Italy became united in 19th century. So this was uh, 15th century. He was thinking about this. So then, just this is just a little mention of uh, what happened before. Uh, Gicciardini, but you know, of course, uh, Machiavelli and Gicciardini really marks huge difference in uh, histori Italian uh, histori historiography. So in just uh, just uh, this um, that, uh, this two uh, this uh, paragraph, so if Renaissance historiography maintained a predominantly historical and moralistic pedagogical tone. With the advent of classicism, uh, a new taste for history made its way, dominated by intense political meditation. The new attitude placed the prudence as the ultimate goal of history. That is, it placed the reading of histories, the reading of stories at the foundation of a non utopian but inductive and historical politics, totally functionalized analyzing the truth of history to political truth the knowledge of true governing principle which includes the financial management of each government so this is uh pre you know adam smith this is even before corbett over 100 years later so these people start thinking about this and and, and then i had a conversation with the italian specialist and of course, the finance and all these city states actually, actually, when they think about war, they always think about the uh, economic effect or uh, the economic expenses, uh, the financial expenses. They get a loan or they get money. So it, they're, they're very uh, keen on you know, how to manage the expenses of war. So that's the part I got in. And, and maybe, you know, uh, Gasilaso's reading of uh, Francesco's work might influence him. So, just as this is a minor um, uh, quick uh, introduction about uh, Gicciardini. So he's a, a Gicciardini was a close friend and critic of Machiavelli in contrast to his more uh, famed acquaintance, Machiavelli the Younger. Florentin uh, paid heed to subjects related to economy, economy, trade, and finance. In, in 1512, Gicciardini was sent to a diplomatic assignment in Spain during his stay in the Iberian Peninsula, he composed La Relación and the España, which uh, surveys the country's economy and trade and productivity in the time of the whole influx of the new world. So, in, in, in a way, uh, you know, we, some studies about uh, Francesco Gisardini's uh, interaction with the uh, uh, Spaniards. Spanish intellectuals uh, in his time, but some of, I just thought that this was an interesting part that uh, Gicciardini was really interested in uh, the, the financial management of uh, Spanish government during this time, and maybe this was so kind of influenced and inspired other uh, historians you know, looking at this. This is way before you know macroeconomy or the concept of national economy. So, um, but Try to kind of um, you know write about uh, Casillasso as a sort of like first Latin American uh, thinker who actually uh, concerned about national economy, which we don't see until the 19th century, like you know, independence movement. Around that independent independence movement, we see some of these uh, concerns about national economy, but in, in, Seventh, early 17th century in in, in, in Gavasilas' work, you can uh, see some you know, efforts to figure out how to uh, manage uh, colonies of Spain. Not, not a sense that you know, uh, Gavasilas is trying to give advice or 
uh, help to Spanish uh, Empire, rather be conceptualized as each uh, colony is sort of somewhat uh, analogous to uh, Italian city state. So how each city state, how Peru, how Mexico should have been managed, especially financially. And of course, he he adds you know personal stories, stories about. Uh, Spanish conquistadores, so of course, the civil war between you know Gonzalo, uh, um, uh, um, what is it, uh, um, Pizarro, no? Gonzalo Pizarro, and he's uh, uh, constantly you know going against the Spanish Empire. So, it, 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 in sort of like uh, uh, not fictional, but narrative novelistic narrative he talks about Gonzalo Pizarro but at the same time he really takes this practical uh side of uh, government management uh in Peru I think that's it I think I think finished in 10 minutes so we have time for questions so. okay vamos a abrir a todos, eh, profesor Aguilar y profesor Galera pueden encender su video y así puedes recibir preguntas. Mm -hmm.